The premise of this video is simple. I will teach you how to estimate work, any piece of work in software development with 100% or close to it, accuracy. This video is for people who have a hard time estimating. You want a framework, an approach, a method to estimate. You're being pressured by your manager, by management, to provide high-level estimations who are then turned into commitments. <laughs> you often miss deadlines. If all these things resonate with you, this video is for you. But first, before even going into how to estimate, we need to set the context. The context is important. You might want to skip it, but it's important to understand the full context so that you truly understand why we are estimating in the first place and how to estimate. So why do we even estimate? Why estimate? We could just start development right now and release it when it's ready. First, resource allocation. You have a team, 10 people in the team, 10 developers in the team. You have a roadmap for the year. You should have a high level view on how the team will be allocated throughout the year. You don't want people idle in the team. Nothing to do simply because you didn't plan your work. So you plan your development, you plan your bug support, you plan your project work, high level plan, but at least you have an idea of how people will be allocated to all these things, pieces of work during the year. Second is your involvement with other teams, marketing team, communication team, legal team, and other development teams, dependencies between different teams. If you're planning their work, if they need to give clear delivery dates, you can't just say, I won't be planning my work. <laughs> you need to play the game. Third is budgeting. Good luck believing that the development of a feature, a product, or a project will be approved without at least a cost. A high level estimate in terms of plan. Delivery date. If you work in a company, typically large companies, they do budgeting, right? They will allocate to the project or your team a budget for the year. You can't just get this budget without any plan, <laughs> without a roadmap. You have to estimate. Obviously, there's multiple ways of doing that. There's the agile way of budgeting, which I believe is better compared to the traditional way of budgeting. But still, you need to budget. You need high-level estimations. You need a plan. You need a roadmap. So you need to estimate. And fourth, for the customer, you need to provide a release date, right? You can't provide a release date if you're not at least estimating. This is applicable to movies. You have a release date for movies, gaming, games, phone releases, everything has a release date. Now, we can't just say that in software development, we don't do estimations and we don't provide release dates. It's not possible. We will need to provide release dates at some point. And depending on industries, it might be even months or years prior to the actual release date. So how do you do it? If you're currently in development of something, 99% done, and I tell you, give me a release date, it's easy. 99% done, it's gonna be released in two days. The percentage accuracy of this estimation, of this release date, of this plan is very high. But compare that to a software development. You promised to your customers that this is going to be released in three months, in eight months, right now. You haven't started development, but you already know in the roadmap, because you need to provide the roadmap for a year, your customers demand it. <laughs> but this will be released in eight months. What's the percentage accuracy? You haven't even started development. No, but unfortunately, that's the current state of software development. So how do you provide this estimation or release date, delivery date, roadmap, plan with the highest possible accuracy, percentage of accuracy? First, there's a rule of thumb that you need to follow. It's always better to tell the person, okay, I did some analysis, some exploration, and the two years I told you what it would require to develop is now only one year. Compare that, option two. I told you it was one year, but after some exploration, ah, it's three years. <laughs> it's way worse to overpromise and under deliver. So bear this in mind when talking to management, to your customers, under promise, over deliver. There's also two things that need to be present in order to have the highest level of accuracy in terms of estimation. First, there's no fixed plan. If you are currently in an environment where people are telling you to estimate a roadmap for the year, which cannot be changed. So basically you're estimating something right now. And by the end of the year, you need to deliver exactly on the dates that you mentioned one year prior. 
if this is the current environment you're in, throw the estimations out of a window, throw a plan out of a window, you have bigger problems than that. You need to fix that. You can't be in an environment where the roadmap needs to be estimated one year prior and no one wants to change anything. No days can be changed. The timeline of a project cannot be changed because we already know what will happen during the year. The budget will change. People will get sick. People will be unavailable. There will be issues on production, changes in requirements, plenty of changes in requirements. And we can just say that we won't do all these things. And we will skip to the original scope, the budget and the timeline because the timeline can be moved. So we will reduce the scope if needed. But in reality, it's not like that. We want to deliver something that the customer wants, right? So we need to already assume and understand that a roadmap needs to be agile, <laughs> can change. We welcome change, even late in development, simply because we want to give the most value possible to the customer. We don't want to release something that the customer won't be using. And second, communication. Extremely important. If you can't communicate with developers clearly, or at least the person estimating can't communicate to, with a product owner, with business people, with management, if they are having a hard time asking questions, resolving impediments, blockers, there's a general slowness, bureaucracy in the organization, your estimations won't be accurate, or at least your plan won't be accurate. It needs to be efficient. The organization needs to be efficient, effective. All the people involved in the project need to treat the project as a priority. As soon as there's a blocker, there's an impediment, this needs to be tackled right away. Now, if all these are true, how do you estimate? First, break down the task as small as possible. I know that it's not always possible. Sometimes you need to give high level estimations without even any user stories being written. But as far as possible, break down the task into smaller chunks. But work into smaller chunks because this will force you to find out exactly what needs to be done in terms of requirements, in terms of what and how to do it. The smaller the pieces of work are, the more accurate your estimation will be. If you can't do that, that's fine. You break it down to the smallest possible. Second, you use data. If you're already working in a team, this piece of work, you've done it in the past. You know exactly that's a five pointer. There's a high chance that they, this will also be a five pointer now. If you need to provide really high level estimations, maybe this project is similar to another project that another team or your team did in the past. If it's your team, maybe you can provide a similar estimation. We can talk about the buffer for uncertainty later on. If it's another team, you can provide a similar estimation with a higher level of uncertainty. But we want data here, empirical data evidence that shows us that this was already done. If we need to do something similar, obviously not everything is similar, but if we need to do something as close as possible to what is expected, and we already did it in the past, how much time did it take? How much time did it take? And we try to use this as input data to come up with this estimation. Then you use an estimation technique, hours, Mondays, story points. If you want more details on how to do that, we don't have time in this video, you can watch this video right here on how to estimate. Then uncertainty. This might be the most important part of this video. The more uncertain you are about how to do this piece of work or what can happen while you do this piece of work, any risk involved, you need to increase the level of uncertainty. And the higher the level of uncertainty is, the more buffer you will add to the estimation. If I'm more than 50% certain that I can reach this state, I'm adding 25% buffer. <laughs> because remember, it's always better to under promise and over deliver instead of telling them one year and you deliver in free. Estimations should also be provided in range. The three point estimation technique, I really like it. Range, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and what's most likely to happen. Obviously, you keep your level of uncertainty that we discussed for the middle part, you increase it for the worst case scenario and you decrease it for the best case scenario. You provide this kind of estimation so that people really see it's clearly visible, your stakeholders, management or people will see this timeline and estimation that there's a lot of uncertainty right here simply because you're doing a high level estimation. Another tip is to ask for help if required. If other teams did similar development, if you have solution architects or domain architects, architects in your organization, they can help you with estimation, technical experts that can help you ask for help, especially if management 
or some people are questioning your estimation. They will question your estimation. They will tell you that three weeks is too much. Six months is too much. Stick to your guns and ask for help in order to help you stick to your guns. Nothing good can come out of the most likely scenario was six months, but they told you to move the most likely scenario to three months, simply because before three months makes more sense. Nothing good can come out of this. You will not be able to deliver that in three months. And the final step, well, there's a lot of steps in between, but the final step, we talked about that earlier, refine your estimates as soon as you discover data, any type of data, an impediment, a blocker. You did some research and you realized that we already knew how to do this development or it's already available or we can reuse an interface somewhere. Any kind of data that will slow you down or increase the speed. You revise your estimation because remember, that's one of our requirements. We should be able to revise our estimations. We're going to provide accurate, the most accurate possible estimations, but we should always be able to revise our estimation because if they refuse, management is refusing you, you cannot revise the dates. The dates are fixed. You need to attack over scope. And you need to tell them clearly that you're delivering something that the customer might not like because you're reducing it in terms of scope. If you want more tips, insights on Agile, Scrum, personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.